Hello, Voices from the Bench community. Pat Kuhn from Ivaclar here. Innovation and education are inseparable partners in our profession, where continuous change offers you the opportunity to raise the bar of dental care and elevate what is clinically and technically possible. So we at Ivaclar have created Ivaclar Academy, where we support you through cutting-edge educational programs and resources. We understand that you have busy schedules and individual preferences for learning. To help leverage your time and maximize your learning experience, the Academy has educational opportunities that are easily accessible and fit any learning style. Whether you are looking for an in-person program or for virtual education, Ivaclar Academy offers multi-channel opportunities that allow you to learn at home, in the classroom, in the office, or on the go. In addition, we offer CE accredited learning opportunities. You can receive a certificate of attendance for each CE eligible program or training course completed from the Ivaclar Academy. Simply log on to ivaclar.com and click on the Academy link located at the top of the page to get started. Happy learning. Welcome to Voices from the Bench, a dental laboratory podcast. Send us an email at info at voicesfromthebench.com and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Greetings and welcome to episode 315 of Voices from the Bench. My name is Elvis. My name is Barbara. What's happening, Barb? How are you? I'm good. You know how I am. Busy, busy, busy. Yeah, you seem to be really busy. You guys super slammed right now at this time of the year? Yeah, I'm too busy. Honestly. You're not having the spring break slow down? I honestly am hoping next week we will. <laughs> right now, uh, oh, it's busy. But you know what? Yeah. I got no complaints. You and I have the podcast going on, work going on, life going on. We've got, you know, good things. Yeah, there's a lot going on. I think I uh, recorded this week in my coat because I just walked in the door and hit the button. And, <laughs> and, and as soon as we were done, I had to go out to another appointment. So We're talking on Saturday, but doesn't this get released on the eclipse day? Yeah, it actually is. You know, it's funny here in Indiana, just for uh, and giggles, I guess, I uh, looked up hotel prices. Yeah, most of them sold out. The few that were left were just regular hotels. They're usually like a hundred, hundred twenty dollars, seven hundred dollars a night. Oh my god! Yeah, all for that? Is it like a once in a how many years? I think I don't know. I don't follow that stuff. Yeah, I think the last time was in the seventies. It happened. Okay, I'm not sure, but uh, maybe 2044. I don't know. I don't know. So you know you can look right at least. Oh, of course. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. Okay. Just going to go stand outside and look up with special glasses on. And you saved yourself $500 because you're right there and you don't need a room. So that's a plus. Should have rented out the house. Is what <laughs> <I should. laughs> yeah, what's happening? Let's talk. Well, in less than a month, if you can believe it or not, I do Barb and I, we are doing something that's always kind of been a dream of the podcast. Ever since 2019, we have taken this podcast to dental shows to set up and record people in the industry face-to-face. We have always recorded here in the U.S. Right on. I gave it some thought, did some quick counting in my head. I think we've been to nine different states with this podcast, which is pretty cool. Yes, it is. Yeah. But we've always wanted to go international and record in a different country. We thought we'd go to the IDS, right? That was the first thought we were thinking. That was always our thought, just because it's like the biggest show in the world. Right. And, you know, we actually have a lot of listeners that are not in the U.S., which is super amazing and we are super thankful for. So tell us. Well, it's it's not a secret, but the good people at ExoCAD have finally made this happen for us. And thank you very much. Absolutely. May 9th to the 10th, we will be in Mallorca, Spain, recording at the ExoCAD Insights 2024 meeting. Ah, so crazy! It's amazing. Woo. We are super excited to participate in this epic event and capture just a small bit of all the amazing things that are happening over those few days. Now... Head over to exocad.com forward slash insights 2024 to see this amazing lineup of speakers and events. Now, there's still time. We're getting close here. We're a month out, but there's still time to register and book some flights. 
and use the code VFTB15 and save 15% off of the registration fee. That's a lot. Like, that's amazing. 15%. It adds up. And I tell you, this area, this Majorca, it looks amazing. Oh, I know. I know. But... (laughs) Everybody, we want to remind you guys about the shirts and the hoodies that are still up for sale for a limited time. And I want to emphasize limited time. We sold these back before Lab Day, and they were a huge success in raising money for the Foundation for Dental Laboratory Technology. They have a super great logo on the back with the saying, quote, dental technicians making dentists look good since the 1700s. So, Head over to any of our social media pages or voicesfromthebench.com forward slash shirts. You got to order before April 18th. And please don't ask us after that because that happens all the time. I keep sharing, 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 sharing. I told my sister. I told my friends. April 18th. Two weeks. And we're not bringing it back again. I promise this time. This is it. Come on. All right. So we're on week three of Conversations. From the Ivoclar Ballroom back at l and Lab Day Chicago 2024. This episode features four amazing people that sat down to talk to us about all things dental technology. First up is past podcast guest who comes all the way back from episode 45 and 46. Hey, that was like five years ago, bro. It was such a long time ago. James Angeloni. So most people know him as the Denture Man, and he stops by with his son, also James Angeloni. Yeah, man. Who is his junior, but not junior, because the Denture Man is a junior, which makes this James a third. Confused. Yeah, are you confused? I am. Yeah, I am too. The Denture Men talk about switching all conversions to the Smart Denture Conversion System, All about dad teaching his son his technique before he heads out to dental school. And doing conversions at lab day against other technicians for a cash prize. Then we get to talk to the amazing Patrick Kuhn. Pat is the digital consultant for Ivoclar. What does that mean, you ask? He gets to be a part of the R&D for them and also educates all of us on the best way to get the most out of our Ivoclar equipment and materials. Pat talks about his history in the Air Force, starting as a dental assistant, working for the military as a civilian, joining Ivoclar, getting into education, and some exciting new and coming soon things from Ivoclar. Printable lithium disilicate, anyone? Hello. I'm all over that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And then we wrap up the episode with a special conversation with a very special lady. Barb, I don't know where you found this lady. I remember turning around, and there she was, Peggy Alexander. She stopped by Lab Day after attending the American Prosthodontist Association meeting that was happening that same weekend. Peggy is a clinical instructor at the University of Texas and has a great story about getting to where she is now. When she wanted to go to dental school, she was told that she was too old and no one would want a female dentist. Can you believe that? God, that makes me crazy. But you see, Peggy is 87 years young and talked about the issues wanting to create a career when she lived in Alabama in the 50s. But that didn't stop her from succeeding and having a wonderful career. Peggy talks about getting her degrees, raising a family, getting into teaching, the importance of proper communications with the lab, And what's next for the soon-to-be retired Peggy? So join us as we chat with James Angeloni Jr., James Angeloni III, Patrick Kuhn, and Peggy Alexander. Whether you're looking to elevate your craftsmanship or looking to cut back on cost, look no further. Vita MFT teeth are the ultimate solution for creating lifelike and stunning smiles. Crafted with precision and backed by cutting edge technology, Vita MFT teeth offer unparalleled aesthetics and durability. And since Vita believes in the power of experiencing excellence firsthand, for a limited time only, they are offering you the chance to get a complimentary case sample. That's right, a full case absolutely free. 
just visit vitanorthamerica.com forward slash free MFT. Don't wait any longer to start providing your customers a premium tooth at an economy price. Redeem your free case sample, and if you're ready to buy, Vita will even give you an extra 10% off discount by shopping online on their newly launched online store. Join the Vita family today, and we appreciate your support of the podcast. Voices from the Bench. The Interview. It's not even dentured gentlemen, just men. Men. I mean, if we collaborate, we really got to come up with a better name. You standing? I'm sitting. Well, you got to, that's what, just in case people watch. We're not presenting to anybody besides the. Oh, we're presenting right now. How's everybody doing? This is James Angelini, the denture men, coming to you live from the Avaclar situation. <laughs> I'm just going to stand over here. <laughs> let you guys do your own thing. Just whatever you want to do. <laughs> this is super exciting. Here we are back at the Ivoclar Ballroom, Chicago Lab Day 24. I have the Angelonis. Oh. James and James Angeloni. The denture men. The denture, the denture men. men. So let's let's start. Yes. How do I address James? Senior, junior? That's going to be weird. This is the problem. So I'm actually a junior, and he's the third. Oh, you're the third? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a legacy. I didn't realize that. <laughs> All right, Junior. So Junior's the original denture man. Yeah. Um, coming here from Iowa Clark. Today, my son's with me, and um, he's in university, first year of undergrad. For what? Biology, pre-dental. You're going into dental? You yeah. want to be a dentist? Yes. I'm going to have to ask you to leave. <laughs> <laughs> what makes you want to be a dentist? Well, probably, like, prosthodontist. Oh, you so I could do the big. stuff he does, yeah. but have Dr. in front of my name. Do you just want to give him instruction? Do you want to? Yeah, I want to be the boss. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Yeah. And, and I'll I'll fix his mess once he's done. <laughs> well, that's exciting. Yeah. When was your episode? I, I should have looked it up. Oh, we're talking. We're talking. I think I was 15. Was I was out there? Episode 15. It was something. It I was, looked at it last night. It was in 2018. Though. It was oh my lord. A long time ago. Anything happened since then? Oh, so much. <laughs> so much has happened. Um, still lecturing internationally for Stroman, doing a lot in Canada for the denturists. Um, today, James and uh, myself are at uh, Lab Day Chicago 2024, and what we're doing is running the Smart Denture Conversion Booth. Um, not being sales reps, but being a, a master technician and an apprentice technician, our booth, we want people to come on down and challenge me, the denture man, in a conversion off. Um, and if you can beat me in a conversion off, I'll actually give you $1,000 cash. But Do if you, you have the cash on you right now? No, nah, it's done at the booth. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll wondering. split it with you. We'll <laughs> end this show as fast as we can. <laughs> uh, my idea for the show is just to get like a lot more traction in the booth is let's have my son, the apprentice, uh, come on by and we could show a master tech and a pre- uh, apprentice at the same time, two different skill levels. And really, he's done with his conversion really almost right after me. So me doing, you know, 100 a year, him doing 23 conversions in uh, 2023 um, with the system. 23 and 23. Oh, 23 and 23. (laughs) That's got to be a shirt. So it's very interesting because a lot of people like seeing – like Sorry. seeing um, <laughs> James Barb Johnson. joined us. Uh, hi, I have been wanting to see you and talk to you forever. Good to see you guys. Good morning. It's James. 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 It's, yes. it's Father, son, I the, love it. Junior and the third. Nice. So God, I'm glad I'm here. Know. Sorry I'm late, y'all. No, no worries. Okay. So you're at the smart conversion denture Smart Denture Conversion. Yes, booth. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> and we had him on on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Do you have a, a lot of people coming up to the booth know what it is? So right now we're getting a lot of traction with Smart Dentures. It's really only been out for about two and a half, three years. Yeah. But with the traction that this thing is getting because of the part, once you see it and once you do it, it's really hard to go back to the old school traditional 100%. way of, of converting. Because this way of Smart Dentures, if you could reline a denture, you could do a conversion. Because it is really all we're doing downstairs is just teaching people how to reline and then drill some holes and convert. So yesterday's, uh, we did a competition, and m- mine was done in 16 minutes and 8 seconds. Six wow. seconds. Yeah, so, yeah, it's pretty quick. And even the one that was competing against me, she was done in around 21 uh, minutes. So it's extremely quick and very proficient downstairs. I think I saw a video of that on Facebook this morning. Yeah. Were they, were they videoing mm-hmm. you guys? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was pretty cool. 
Yeah. So, so that's quick, right? So how long does it normally take, oh, or would it normally take six without? Six hours. It? Yeah, very traditionally. <laughs> Seriously? Uh, no, very traditionally, it's going to be about an hour and a half with a technician wow. that does this all the time. Um, but that's if you have, significant. Yeah, if you have a, a junior technician, it can take up to two and a half hours. So when we have a patient in the chair, we want to get that patient out of the chair as fast as possible because surgery is done. So me being the clinician, I just want to do what I got to do, get that patient in a very nice provisional, and send them on their way. Yeah. Yeah. So with smart dentures, the dentures are actually stronger because we're not opening these huge holes. Um, and doing a reline with a hard acrylic so there's no composite, making it even more stronger. So I've had great success over the last two years with Ivotion dentures mm -hmm. and um, the smart uh, conversion parts with those two combined in my career the last two years fractures remakes and everything else has been done Just down, done yeah. yeah when did you first get introduced to this oh this is the greatest story so <laughs> <laughs> let's see so okay about two years ago brandon Crawford, the owner of smart denture called me down to apex uh north carolina so he calls me up and says, hey, Denture Man, I want you to come on down. So he knew about you about yes. on social media. Social media. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. sure. Yeah. And he's like, hey, Denture Man, come on down to North Carolina. And I said, no problem. What do we want to do? He's like, well, I'm going to do four conversions in, before lunch. And I said, well, I thought I was coming to watch you. I don't want to work. He goes, no, absolutely. You're not touching anything. I just want to watch. I want you to watch me, and I want you to show you the system. And I'm going to do four conversions before lunch. And I told him, BS, that's impossible. <laughs> I was Starting say. at 1 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was actually at 8 o'clock. And no kidding, it was a set of twins. And by noon, the second twin was done with his double conversion. Once I saw that in the hospital, I said, Brandon, whatever it takes, I want in. Since then, I don't do big hole conversions anymore. It's only small. You haven't hole. done it no. at all. So he was the creator of them? Yeah, Brandon. Brandon Colford. So he actually across. pulled you yeah. in and... Mm -hmm. Because the, the personality on social media, he just wanted to yeah. get that uh, out oh, there. Of so course. He, so he wanted it's to be And once I saw it, it, it was game-changing for me. Um, absolute game-changing just because of the fact that we're turning something from an hour and a half into literally me in my hands 15 minutes, but even a rookie tech, 30 minutes, and you're done. Wow. You know? It's amazing. So, so, so I'm assuming you're lecturing for them, correct? Yes. I'm a KOL for um, Strauman and uh, Smart Denture Conversions. So do you yeah. go, like, to every meeting, or how do you how do you work everything into your schedule, I guess, um, is my I'll, question. Yeah, they, they'll call me up, and I'll do a couple. We just did a show in Sarasota. Um, oh, also, really? Yeah. That's my neighborhood. Oh, I'm in Tampa. That's awesome. That's cool. We're, we're actually talking on right now. That's so why I want to come down to your guys' booth. We're talking about um, Lab Day California and about doing the same show kind of doing yeah. the competition thing. Lab so, Day West is a good show. Right. I, I'm pretty excited for California in May. So I think competition is a cool way of getting it out there. We went to the mm -hmm. DTG, and they did that sort of event. Mm -hmm. And it's cool. You're watching people, and you're watching them work, it and you're moving. Excited. you got all this yeah. adrenaline going. Right. And, and then you're like, yeah, 16 minutes, yeah, I'm done. done. Yeah. <laughs> well, and at this venue, because it's all technicians, um, I'm not letting dentists compete against me because this is not their show. Um, but the, de the technicians literally just, we have to see it. We have to touch it as techs. A lot of us literally oh, got to, yeah. I'm sorry, but I literally yeah. have to mess it up before yeah. I'm good. So like, <laughs> let me mess it up on a type on. And I, and at my booth, I'm like, please mess it up in front of me. And I'll show you how to fix it. And then you'll have a successful case when you get back home. Oh. Yeah. So what's it like for you working with your dad? It's fun. How long have you been doing it? Um, I started last summer. He brought me on just to show me. And it went ding. Yeah. And he gave me the dental bug. And it what do you think if you in your first surgery? I'm like, oh, I was a little nervous. Little Never oh, seen like anything that. like that. Slapping in the blood. Yeah. And the so uh, it was, I think it was a double arch. And I was watching, and the surgeon was like, if you feel queasy, you got to pass out. <laughs> That's what they say get out. That would be me. <laughs> get out of the room. Um, Lean against the wall. But it wasn't like that. I thought it was really cool. That's and kind then, of spectacular that you like. Yeah. Immediately liked it. Yeah. That, and that'd be tough for me. And then, like, dad's point of view and <laughs> <laughs> doing his stuff, that was fun. Like, it wasn't boring work. It was yeah. it was cool. So you've been doing it only a year? Yeah. Under a, a year? Mm -hmm. So what do you actually do in the lab? Like, how do you train a young tech, I, I guess, is my question. Is no, so my lab's oh. actually in a sprinter van. So I just do oh, conversions, okay, well. go to hospitals and OMS. Uh, James and I, we run around 22 oral surgery, oral surgeons in Cleveland, um, and our business is really going out there and special, um, doing technicians for the specialists. Because okay. over shutdown, literally I saw a lot of things go wrong in our industry. But I also saw when I was working for our pros that when he would send me out conversions, the oral surgeons, the pros, and the perio need techs too. Yeah. But those techs have to be at an extremely high level because they could see right through you. Oh, yeah. um, so when I saw that through shutdown, I couldn't sit down 
and it was months that we all had to do our thing. So I bought a, ba- a van, and I made a lab inside my van. Nice. So now I just go around and convert. I'm trying to get the van to one of the shows one of these days and put it in the show. Oh, that'd be kind of cool. And then do a conversion in Is the it rat? Is it like, so <laughs> Is it rat? You <laughs> I, know what I'm talking about. That's such a guy <laughs> question. Wow, <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, no, the reason I didn't want to wrap it is because there is a lot of implant stuff in there, and I just didn't want people like, advertising. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have to have like a different license or anything to be mobile like Mm-mm. that? It's in Ohio. It's all just being a lab. Yeah. Wow. So I do have a, my own practice that... Um, I could go back and do things, but most of the stuff is at oral surgery practices and then the van. So you guys work yeah. together yeah. in yeah. tight quarters? Yes. I'm sure it's big. Yeah. I'm not being, you yeah. know. Yeah. So I'm giving James uh, the first ever Denture Man scholarship. So with his scholarship, he's got to work when he's um, in, out of, on holidays and in the summer. So in the summer and holidays, he helps me with lab works, and I'm going to send him this year on his own to convert because he his you apprenticeship with on your own yet? No. Yeah. I mean – He's been next yeah, to me, but sure. but solo, solo, yeah, that's my push for him this year. Yeah. It's pretty sweet. Yeah. Do you oh, like, yeah. do you you like working with your dad? Yeah. I worked with mine. That's why I'm asking. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. And after we're done, I'll, we'll ask you off to the side if you want. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you sometimes run into, like stress level? Like, you know, what goes wrong? Well, or what it. could go wrong? <laughs> See, that's I'm, I'm a ceramist, so <laughs> just kind of fill me in. Um, well, what could go wrong in surgery is really like a, an implant moving or we have to reshuffle something. Uh, when th- even if we do a guided surgery, we have to have a high-level technician here because if something goes wrong, literally that surgeon or that perio is going to stare at you as a technician and tell you to fix it. Or at, they'll literally ask you, what should we do? So as a converter in this industry, you have to know about implants because they're literally going to ask you a question. And if you give them the wrong answer, they will never talk to you again. So with anatomy, implant technology, and being amongst the best of the greatest out there, because I don't like to skimp on this procedure, because a lot of my patients are paying $60,000 a mouth. Yeah. So with something sure. like that being blue collar, the technician, that's a lot of money for me. So I always thought, let's just give them the best. So that's why I always wanted to do Ivotion, the best implants, and now last two years of Smart Denture. So you just learn all the implants yeah. as you go. And my uh, son's an implant technician, yeah. and there's just so much to it. Yeah, it's, it's a lot to take in. But um, you weren't here when we were talking about it, but I'm a freshman in university right now. So this is just great information because yeah. I do want to go to dental school after undergrad. Wow. So learning all this is couldn't ask for anything better. Yeah. Straight up, we were talking to a doctor in a tech yesterday, and they were talking about how much we need removable and people to help with it and learn it and teach it. It's just doctors don't know. No, no. And especially with the removable technology right now, it's, it's kind of gone down. I mean, a couple of years ago, the removable tech was the best of the best. You know, 20 years ago, it was the ceramist. Yeah, now it's right. like the implant tech and the converter that it's out there. But um, the, what we're having a hard time right now is people that actually could fabricate dentures. And that's all over the industry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so being the denture man himself, it's it's kind of frustrating because I get to ask make so many dentures, but I'm in surgery so much that I can't really make dentures. James has never even made a denture. Been he, wanting to, he but he won't teach me. Teach me to make a denture. Teach me to make a denture. Who makes your dentures? You convert right now, Row. Down lab, oh, yeah. yeah, I get BJ. my I vote. Yeah, BJ that's from where Rome. the Ivotion comes mm-hmm. in. Yeah, he lectured yesterday yeah. Uh, with yeah, some yeah. of my slides, which was awesome. Um, so I get my stuff because I live. Seven minutes from Rome. Oh, do you really? Mm-hmm. So, I, yeah, I do, he, he gave me all my devotions, uh, and then I convert all over Cleveland. I love your two story McDonald's out there. I'm just going to say that. I love it. That's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is He's, that? It's two, I've been to Rome a few yeah. times. Uh, like right around the corner is a McDonald's. It's, it's like a, it's a swanky McDonald's. It's, it's got nice. two stories. Yeah, I end. don't know why it's no, so different. And when they built that 20 years ago, it was like a mansion. We're like, what is this? Yeah, it's so weird. It's just, <laughs> So I got to ask, did you guys already cover your the denture man and where you came up with that? And obviously that's what you are, mm-hmm. but let's talk about it's it your again. tag we name. Probably did 15 years ago. Yeah. When we talked. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so it's actually a great story on how I became the denture man. Well, so I did serve two tours in Iraq. Uh, the kid sitting next to me right now, he was born in 05. I served my my last tour in Iraq in 05. So the first time I met this kid. When he was oh, six days old. Really? Yeah. So, I, see, this guy was six days old when I first met him. Uh, so, my life oh. was completely changed from going to, to fighting, now having a family. Definitely issues with the head and actually being around crowds. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I have severe PTSD and severe social phobia. So, a lot of people ask me how I can present in front of a thousand dentists. Um, yeah. I just say, I know the knowledge and we're going to go ahead and do it. But how I became, when he was six days old, 
um, I had an issue actually be getting out there in society. So my dad, which is walking around here, he's a dentist, uh, uh, and he said to me, get off your butt. I'm going to teach you how to make dentures. The original James Angeloni? No, my stepdad. He's my dental oh, okay. dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> so he's walking around. Ken Kamik, wherever you're at, I love you. All right, so <laughs> he showed us how to make dentures. And in, in 2011, I had a periodontist in town that wanted to do the new all-on-4. He went to a program, and yeah. he needed a denture tech. So he's like, hey, come on in. So I said, I don't have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> and he's like, okay. And I'm sitting next to surgery, and I did get queasy, um, even me. So the first time I saw blood since Iraq, I was just like, uh, uh. Uh, <laughs> so I can see that. Yeah. yeah. And, and then, but right after that surgery was done, I looked around and I said, oh, my God, I'm part of a team again. And that was the best thing. Now, we know as technicians getting yelled at by lab slips and on the phone all the time. But being chairside with a specialist and them actually thanking you and loving you, that was the best. So now, just like being a Marine, being part of a team, I'm actually a part of a team in dentistry, which I absolutely love. And when I was embraced by the specialist, which taught me everything, um, I, I loved it even more. So now I'm a part of the ACP, American College oh, yeah. of Prosthodontics. Yep. Um, and love and life. You're love part life. of a ton of teams. I mean, it seems like every day on Instagram, it's like <laughs> you and this other practice and this oral surgeon, yeah. and then the mm. next day, it's another one. Yeah, so how I run my business in Cleveland is I do run it just for the specialists. So I do the surgeries and the workups for the specialists. And if the general dentist wants my help to restore, I do charge a super premium because I actually lecture and I teach that dentist how to, you know, to restore these. The finals. The finals, yeah. yeah. So when you guys see me on Insta, what, like a GP, that's just me at that GP's office just trying to, like, promote their practice because that's all I do on Insta is I'll take a picture of my surgeon, promote their practice a little bit, and what the surgeons all see is like, oh, why is James over there? I want James, you know, so uh -huh, that little bit of competition. brilliant. Yeah, that free advertising on Dang. social media, that's how I really ran it. Yeah, yep. that's cool. Smart. How, how involved are you with, uh, smart, <laughs> how are you <laughs> oh, involved with awesome. Row with what they give you? Oh, you, no. You see the designs and like, yes, yeah. no. Oh, yeah, yeah. everything, from the uh, get-go, everything out uh, from Row I see. I have really zero problems just because I've, you know, grew up around Row. Yeah. I do my live surgery courses at Row. So, oh, yeah. I, and I do my own courses at Row. So little facility. Yeah, yeah, we have nice. a great yeah. partnership and there's no competitive uh, yeah. yeah, and stuff with I just stuff. wasn't sure how involved you were with moving teeth, making sure they do it right. Oh, yeah, they'll show me the screenshots and the most nine times That's out of ten. That's the best perfect. way to do it, I swear. Yeah. As long as you're working with a designer that yeah. knows what they're doing and you're just like, good. And especially, it. I'm a, I'm a, even though yeah. I'm in Ivo Clark's booth right now, Ivotion is really the Cadillac right now of these things. Because yeah. yeah. even downstairs with printed dentures, I'm destroying these things. But when I do an Ivotion, it's it's rock solid. Yeah. When you say destroying, what does that mean? Do they just crumble? Yeah, so sometimes when we got to convert, we got to like literally dig these big holes in these things. And the more holes we put in there, the weaker this thing gets. So just imagine having a lower denture with six, eight millimeter holes in it. Like you drop this thing and it's going to shatter. Yeah. So that is a big complication. Makes a lot of sense. I've never heard that oh, before, but it mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense. What if we printed them a little thicker? <laughs> So even if we print thicker, so once the, the the converter converts, it actually gets even smaller. Yeah. yeah. But and it also depends on what acrylic or composite that technician or denturist use to do the pickup. Yeah. Um, so what I like to use is literally methamethacrylate self-cure acrylic for all of my stuff, uh, just because I'm not a big fan of composite with methamethacrylate because I do have bonding issues. Yep, yep. So all of my even guided, guided cases or freehand cases, what I like to do is Unifast Triad from GC America. And I've had zero problems with that right now, also. So, oh, that's what I use. Mm -hmm. on the very but you've few been through I a lot of yeah. material, and finally find ones that really work well. So you probably, right. obviously, KOL. Mm -hmm. yeah. And being a converter, like a, a syringe of any composite is going to cost you a hundred bucks, if, and a small jar of that same acrylic I was talking about is about a hundred bucks for ten conversions. So if you yeah. do a lot, I would recommend going to yeah. uh, acrylic. Yeah. So, awesome. uh, younger James, <laughs> yes. uh, have you figured out how many conversions you have to do before you pay for dental school? <laughs> no, uh, not yet. No, that's no, a great no. Because yeah, I'm not paying for dental school. Wow. One million. <laughs> <sighs> well, good luck to you, obviously. Yeah, thank you. you. Uh, thank got you. your plate full. Learning from the best is oh, no better man. than that, that's for sure. You can't have a better teacher. No, no really. Doubt. Yeah. And my grandpa being a dentist, too, I'm learning the best of both worlds. Yeah. Is he still a dentist? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do, you, yeah. do you go into the practice? Occasionally, but. Uh, it's mainly with this guy. Yeah. yeah. How did you know you wanted to become a dentist? So before he picked me up um, to work with him, I wanted to major in psychology. 
Um, but after the first surgery and really that first summer of seeing how these things go, I'm like, this is awesome. I want to do this. It's kind of yeah, neat how that works, you know. About the same. <laughs> <laughs> but truthfully, I really didn't show him dentistry over the summer because he was only with oral surgeons. So he actually saw a broken condyle. Yeah. He saw some cancer patients. He, he didn't really see dentistry. So when he comes over, I try to like not let him go to the GPs because I don't want him to show him the ugly stuff of the <laughs> GP. I want to show him check. Oh, <laughs> at the higher I'm level. Gonna, yeah. yeah. So I just wanted to keep him at like the extreme level to see what yep. happens. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. it's awesome. And if you can take that, you can take anything. Yeah. Seriously, yeah. that's pretty spectacular. Yeah. Well, good luck to you. That's yeah. awesome. Thank you. So you got Come few, back to us and talk to us in a couple years. When <laughs> good luck on your competitions, Sorry. man. Oh, yeah. So we got a couple more today. Um, and if the technicians don't want to compete against me, um, James will be com com competing against me. So what do they do? You just say, come on over, mm -hmm. and we're going to we're gonna do yeah. a competition and see who you can get. Yeah. And down, they sit down yeah. and just get their hands mm -hmm. in it? Yep, yeah. down at the booth. Thousand uh, bucks. Thousand bucks if you could beat the denture man in Are the Are you conversion. serious? Mm -hmm. well, thousand dollars. <laughs> so that's what we're trying to do. Oh, like, that makes a lot maybe of sense. Cool. I've never done it. But nobody yeah. will, yeah. but if they can, a thousand bucks is Who gets a thousand bucks if nobody wins? It's just for next time. Ah, oh, you yeah. don't get to pocket no, it. I'm probably so. going to say that. If I keep, I'm like, oh, you got to have to give me that. You know, Doesn't sound like he needs to pocket a thousand dollars. I could pocket a thousand dollars. So what about me? <laughs> That'll just go right to your scholarship, buddy. <laughs> you better beat him. Yeah. Do you That's think cool. you could beat him? No. I got close yesterday, but. I had some complications in the conversion, but yeah. I'm still learning. He's sure. got thousands under his belt, and I've done probably like 30. That's not too bad. 23 though. actual cases. Yeah. So I'm still learning. Yeah. And you refuse to do traditional now. Yeah, uh, now I call it big hole. Now I okay. really, really, re unless you're, I go to I a. I know a, we've a, said goodbye uh, like six times. But no, that's cool <laughs> though. I like it. <laughs> big hole. No, big hole. Because that's the way that we traditionally had to do this all the way back from 1983 when we first started doing all on four. It was the hell out always of big hole. And that's the, the issue with those. They're, on, they're not aesthetic. We're destroying the occlusion on these things. And when I'm in a hospital, we can't do occlusal adjustments. So there's a lot going down. Why not? Just because of the dust, the dust in the, oh, the a true OR okay. situation. You can't do it in the mouth. In an OR. In like an OR. In a hospital situation. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, so a lot okay. of that stuff, in the, when I'm in a hospital, true hospital, we'll do the pickup, and then once I do the pickup and the surgeon does a reline because we're in a hospital and I can't go in the mouth as a tech in yeah. the hospital. Yep. So I just, he uses my hand, like my, my words, his hands. So once he does the pickup, then I go down to the van in the hospital parking lot, and I'll do the conversion. Did it park way far away because no. you don't have special parking no. or something? No, and, I, <laughs> and it, the funny part is I got a lot of bass in the back, too, so you could hear me when I'm converting. So <laughs> van shakes. The van shakes, so you know I'm working. Um, but that's what I love because I would just do the crazy, and then when the surgery's done, the surgeon's closing, I go back to my van, which is my personal lab. Yep. Comfortable, everything's there. I rock and roll. Once the patient gets out of recovery, we go screw the uh, provisional in and get out of there. So, yeah. Dang. yeah. But you don't do neat. the traditional at all. No, traditional at all. Like at if you got a call and they said, I want to do it, yeah. you're like smart. I'm not your man. Yeah. No, I, well, my <laughs> fee comes in with the smart stuff and I say, this is what it is. If they give me a complaint saying, hey, I don't want to do that, I'll credit the smart parts and then show them at the end how valuable it is. But you'll still do it traditionally. Oh, no, no, oh. no, no. I'll, like the first time. You'll I'll do it for free. I'll, I'll do it for free. Oh, so that's it, how much you, can, you and that's believe it. Because usually wow. the, the surgeons and even my pros are like, no, no, no. I'm like, okay, the first one's free. And then they see it and they're like, oh, my God, like a screw hole's coming right out of the incisal. Sure. Yeah. I would have to destroy a whole tooth. They're like, oh, my God, that, thing, that, that part saved our, our case. Yeah. So they see that and they're like, whatever it costs. So then I say, well, now my, my fee's this, but it's going to come with all the parts, pieces, the dentures, the guides. Hmm. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Because I just want to do concierge service to really just the OMS, you know, the, the alpha males of our industry. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Fantastic, guys. Well, thank you. Good luck to you. Again. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think that's the end, but yeah, thank you so much it. for talking yeah. to us. Awesome. That was fantastic. Good luck today. <laughs> if you win the thousand bucks, you got to come back and oh, tell yeah. us. I'll brag about it. All right. Yeah, I would. Like I said earlier, it's not about the money. It's just saying you beat them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the new denture. Well, yeah, because <laughs> yeah, we're heading down there now, so he's got at least four. Four conversions left in today, so maybe this last one he could kind of get me. Sweet. Yeah. Good yeah. luck. Right. Thank you. Four today? Yeah, it's not that bad. Yeah. Yeah. It takes 15 minutes. What else are you going to do at lab day? I guess. <laughs> it's better than standing around. <laughs> That's yeah, true. Exactly. That's true. Gentlemen, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Always a pleasure. Thank you, guys. Awesome. So this is super exciting. Yes. Not only are we at LMT lab day, 
Not only are we in the Ivaclar ballroom, <laughs> we have Ivaclar legend Patrick Kuhn. Did what? I say that right? Yeah, yes. Kuhn, oh, nice. that is right. That is correct. How so. are you, sir? I'm doing great. I've been Elvis. trying How to get you, you on doing? this podcast for quite a bit. A little while. A little while. while. It just never here. works out. Yeah, it is what so, it is. But yeah. we're happy to have you now. Absolutely. Ivaclar legend. What does that yeah, mean? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Well, I mean, I associate you with Ivaclar. Seems like oh. you're like a major educator for them. Oh yeah. I do do a lot of education. Yeah, things. I mean, it seems like every time there's a course at their facility, your name's attached to it. Um, so, yep. what's your role there? What do you do? So Tell us all about it. My role actually has changed recently. I uh, just moved over. I was a technical consultant, which meant I worked with all of the materials and analog equipment and things of that nature. Sure. That's uh, fun. Yes, it was. It was Especially with Ivaclar. Oh, I mean, yeah. Talk about all There's so much stuff. Yeah. So much stuff there. Um, but uh, this last fall, uh, we created a new department, and uh, I am now cons- called a digital consultant, which now means I am working with all of the digital equipment exclusively, digital materials, uh, doing uh, some uh, R&D testing on new equipment, new nice. softwares, uh, things of that nature. So it's so does it's that like float your boat and give it you does. a nice? It does. It does. Yeah, yeah. You don't, you don't have to mess with the Ivo base anymore. No, no not, very often. <laughs> not very often. I can. I still, I still work those, uh, some of those telephone calls and everything yeah. once in a while um, just because uh, we're trying still to uh, find a, uh, a new consultant to take my place from oh, the technical side. Really? So, That's interesting yeah. to put out there. So if anybody I mean, out there is interested. Interesting. Um, what do they need to out? know? Uh, Pretty much everything. Yeah, yeah. They, they need to know All a little bit out of everything. Yeah. Not necessarily everything Iva Clark. It always helps. Sure. It helps with training. But to just be able to know most of the processes, both on the removable and fixed sides, is really a big thing. Which is a so lot. <laughs> it's a, it is a lot. It yeah. is a lot. So, yeah, so, basically everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but it's a good department to work with. Uh, our director, Jeff Smith, and our manager, Gary Osborne. I've known both of them since, oh, gosh, 1988. So both all in the Air Force together. We so. were talking to Ed McLaren yesterday, yeah. and he said one of the most amazing things about Ivaclar and your company is that people have been there for 30, 40 oh, yeah. years, yeah. and the longevity and the relationships, and how yeah. long have you been there? Uh, it, ten and a half years. It'll so be nice. 11 years in June. Yeah. 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 It, it's, it's pretty special. It is. It is. I, um, you know, I again, knowing Jeff and Gary for as long as I did, I'd run into them when I was in the Air Force still, and they were already working with Ivor Clark. And uh, just seeing so like, what they did and everything else. When yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and it took me quite a while because I was waiting for my kids to get out of the house and all that stuff before I could uh, make that move to Buffalo at the time. So, oh, so you're, you're Air been. Force trained. I am. I am. Oh, so you went through their program. I did. I did. I was, uh, I, I got in the Air Force in 1984 right after getting married and getting out of high school. Um, was a dental assistant you for, got married for in three high years. School? Right after. Wow. Right. right after. <laughs> and I'm still married to her. Oh, that's nice. Good for you. And I'm still married to her. We've actually known each other since about the fourth grade. So wow. No kidding. Yeah, no, no so kidding. So those things do exist. <laughs> yes, they do. They do. Um, but, uh, no, I, I went in right after uh, right after high school. Uh, Did you was pick a dental the program? Assistant. Uh, no. Ac- well, I know this yes story is no. kind of weird. Like yes and no. It's kind of weird. Um, so what happened was I wanted to be a medical lab guy. Okay. Uh, they didn't have any jobs. And the recruiter convinced me that becoming a dental assistant mm-hmm. huh. was going to be great and profitable when I got out because I could clean teeth and I could do all that stuff, which we all know is not true nowadays. Yeah. Now. But I got in and I, I was d- did dental assisting for three years and it was it was fun. I enjoyed it. Um, but at the time we needed something. If you were a first term uh, airman, you needed to have something called a career job reservation to be able to re-enlist into that same job. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yep, yep. Just, just to make sure they didn't have too many dental assistants or too many aircraft loaders that makes or sense. whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, my job, they said, nope, you're not getting a CJR. We don't have, we have way too many dental assistants. So I had to cross. Pivot. Train. I had to pivot. Yeah. And one, it just so happened they had 10 jobs for, or 10 spaces for cross training in the dental lab. And I got lucky and got one of them. Was so it hard to get? Yeah. Or? No. <laughs> I mean. I filled out paperwork. Um, the, you did. I did have to go in and t- take a written sp- spatial 
analyzing type tests where I had to see a cube that maybe had some cutouts and then kind of kind of figure out what it looked like from the other side. Hmm. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah. You know, you hear the things about people having to do going and carve chalk and things like that. Uh, I don't see that much anymore, Hmm. but. Back when I went through in 88, it was that spatial analyzer test. So then so you went through their program. Went through the program. Which is like, what, like six months? It was but six like months at Shepherd Air year, Force Base. Three years worth of knowledge in yeah. six months, yep. I've heard. It is. So what do you do? Like, is it everything? They everything. teach you everything? Everything. A little bit of ortho, a little bit of crown and bridge, a little bit of removable. Yeah, just a little bit of everything over, over a six-month period. So you know just enough to be dangerous. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right. So do doctors. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but um, you get out, and after... After that, you get a good training program. And I went to a great base. I went to uh, Eglin Air Force Base after that. That's where I took my um, CDT. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good, it's a great place, yep. especially back in the 80s. It was wonderful. It was a b- wonderful place. Good place to be um, coming right out of tech school because we had a NCOIC who knew what he was doing and had a great training plan for us. So he was training all of us to be independent technicians. Oh, so to make lives for yourself, to make lives for ourselves, to and we had to we had to be able to pass all these things before they would upgrade us. Um, so in the so service, yeah. you didn't just do one thing all day no. long. That's good. No, no. A lot of places you go in and you do. You kind of specialize. You'll sit um, and be a waxer, depending yeah. on where you're at, or you'll be only fixed, or you'll be only removable. But uh, you know, it's nice to get to a place where they will at least train you in everything. Yeah, um, for sure. Fully, fully. So. So then, what'd you do? Did you actually, after school and after the military, did you open a lab? No, no. Actually, I got out of the military. I retired in 2006, and I wasn't planning on retiring then. Um, I was getting close to it, but I wasn't planning on it. But it just so happened that the lab I was running... You realize oh. that was 20 years ago. Yes, ma'am, I do. I don't know how the heck you I could know. have retired. I know. Like, what? <laughs> exactly. I know. Okay. Oh, I retired from the I'm Air Force. I'm doing the math yeah. in my brain. I retired from the Air Force. Yeah. yeah. No, I was, no, I get I was, it. But, uh, but some people are like, see ya. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no, I. Uh, it just so happened that the civilian that worked in our lab um, for me was ready to retire. Gosh. And my commander came to me and said, hey, if you... Uh, I know you're at that point where you're going to be start looking at retiring. If you want to retire, I will do a by name request for you and get you right back in here. So I retired in July. And then became July. a civilian that did your same job? I, wow. Basically. So I retired in July. I came back to work at the end of, Oct- of September and doing you know lab work in the same lab I was running before. Did they pay so. you okay back then? <laughs> it was okay. It was okay. Uh, it's what they paid lab techs anywhere for okay. in the in the military is it great no is it is it good living sure and it's got great benefits so sure. so it was good um so i did that for another seven years seven um, years wow. seven years like doing that so uh about 39 total years of uh federal service nice and uh, and you. everything uh, i enjoyed it it's uh i really appreciate your guys' support with that but yeah it's just it was it was the best thing i did for myself uh besides marrying my wife of course of course and uh yeah, at that point, after seven years, uh, one of our doctors had come in. He had just been to a dental meeting um, and had been talking to Bob Ganley. <gasps> Bob Ganley. And Bob was looking for my hero. a new technician to come in uh, for his technical support team. And they love the Air Force and military technicians. Most of our department is ex-military uh, between Navy and Air Force. And uh, he asked if he knew anybody. And he says, I know one person, but i got to talk to him first. So just so happened i sitting at my bench one day and dr uh dr roberts he's, he's at, actually at university of kentucky uh now um he comes in and he taps on my shoulder and looks at me and does little finger curls says come here <laughs> come here i'm like Uh-oh. oh crap oh crap oh, oh, yeah. Can't and, be good. and great. we and we walked into a walked out of the lab and because you know in the air force all our labs are situated in with with dental offices uh we went into one of our dental treatment rooms he closed the door i'm really thinking oh boy i i messed oh, up yeah. that now and he goes, have you ever thought about working for Ivoclar? <laughs> and I'm like, well, actually I have. And I was actually at a point where I was ready to do something else. I was ready to go somewhere else. And, Did the Army and use a lot of Ivoclar stuff? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, I Only the best. I had been using, um, uh, we used a lot of Vita porcelains. Uh, but I had been using a lot of Emacs and Empress okay, and everything yeah, yeah. else beforehand. Probably about six months to a year before I left, we I had gotten an Ivo base into, okay, the, yeah. into so we had, we had just started using Ivo base. 
so yeah, so I I knew a lot of the I knew a lot of this, the materials okay, yeah. already, um, so that that did help. But um, but yeah, uh, but you know the Air Force uses whatever is is the best. You know we try to find what is best. And, and so you said okay. yes. I, I and said then yes. <laughs> you up and moved to Buffalo. I did. I did. I up and moved to Buffalo. Where were did you living again? I was at um, Keesler Air Force Base in Biloxi, Mississippi. Okay. Yeah. So you went from the heat to the cold. Yes, I did. Yes, you I that did. Had yeah, they, and they did it at the right time because they got <laughs> me to come up, and it was it was late spring and. Uh, I got up there, and the weather was beautiful. And then uh, in <laughs> that winter, they decided to have the yeah. worst winter they'd have had in 100 years. Oh, <laughs> and I'm sure your wife was like, thanks, honey. No, actually, <laughs> uh, that's kind of a funny story, too. Um, she was working for the military as well as a civilian nurse um, in the pediatric clinic there at Keesler and was staying in Biloxi until she could find a job somewhere Around up Buffalo. there, up yeah, in yeah. Buffalo, that, that was military, because she cl was close to her retirement as well. And it just never happened. I was up there for three years, uh, and just never could find anything. And she, oh, was, wow. Wow. And she was in Biloxi for three years. Dang. And uh, got to the point where I walked up to Jeff Smith one day in the hallway and just said, you know, I don't know how much longer I can do this. You know, we've, been together, since, we've been together since fourth grade. I don't know anybody any different here. Um, so I just don't know how much longer I can do this. And they found a position for me at the training center in Sarasota. And cool. Carol, was, Carol was lucky enough to get a job at the pediatric clinic at McDill. So... I have a Clark found her a job. No, no. Oh. It, it just so happened. McDill is in Tampa. McDill's in Tampa. Oh. It's right there. Air Force huge. Right or, there. Or military, but I should it, say. It was so funny because she had applied after she found out I was moving to Sarasota. She applied. Oh, um, I see. Yeah. And then as we were moving down, she flew up to Buffalo to help me move. And as we were moving down, driving down from Buffalo to there, she got a call from the pediatric clinic on McDill saying, hey, would you like a job? Nice. So, yeah. That worked so it worked out, out fantastic. Um, so yeah, so we've been back together since. Uh, unfortunately, we closed the center in uh, in, two, in at the at the beginning of COVID or middle of COVID there, but that did give me the chance to move back to Mississippi, where I'm living now, right down the street from my kids, and so it's nice. My That's kids and cool. grandkids. So how do you do what you do? Do you go back and forth? To I Buffalo go back and forth to Buffalo or fly wherever they need me. Um, I do a lot of it virtually over the phone, a lot of webinars, uh, things like that. So that's the way uh, of the world now. Yeah, anyways. it is. It is. Right, and, what do you do? Do you just teach people how to do whatever they want yeah yeah it's uh, uh a lot of it is like i said a lot of it's digital i do a lot of ive ocean training virtually uh to teach people with three shape and exocad how so to if do somebody that. buys a pm7 yep you're the one that kind of sets them up trains them how to use Absolutely. it Absolutely. we do have our field equipment uh, consultants sure. who do go in when they install and give them a quick training for yeah. a day and a half um, but a lot of times they need something a little bit more in depth. So that's where our team, me and Elise Hifko, uh, will go in and, uh, and do some virtual training or maybe fly in or, or drive up. Uh, I'm probably going to be driving over to uh, Louisiana in a couple weeks and maybe. Well, you're up, in a great area. Around. There's oh, a lot of big park sales kind of close, yep, a lot of big I'm, labs, friends I'm of ours. With, I'm working with uh, Blake and Kenny right now, yeah. or Bobby, I should say, yeah. um, to go up and do some ivotion training with them because they're getting into that uh, since they have bought their PM7. Yeah, yeah we just, just had just them on, on the, the podcast, podcast. Yeah. and they were all like, PM7! <laughs> yeah. yeah, they were like really impressed with certainly, it. Certainly, certainly. Yeah, I, I love the machine. I've been working with it since it came out. and uh, I've got two. I love it. Yes. And I love them as well. Yeah. But, but Ivocar has a facility in Buffalo for training. Do you put on courses there? I do. I do. In fact, okay. um, I'm there two weeks from today, or doing two weeks from yesterday to, uh, to do an Ivotion yeah. training. Oh, right. Ivotion and Exocad. Do you do anything but Ivotion? Seems like a I do. I do. <laughs> I, I do a lot of Ivotion. Yeah. Um, I definitely do a lot of that. Um, and it's kind of what people have know me for. But I do all kinds of other things. I um, I do Emacs classes. I do Zirconia classes, um, you know, for Zircad and Zircad Prime, yeah. things like that. So that, you know, a little bit of everything. You know, I'm looking forward to uh, now with our uh, our printer being re-released this year. Uh, I'm looking forward to doing maybe some Emacs. Uh, uh, you guys have a printer? Uh, print and press. Yeah, our PR5 our, is, is just being re-released. We, we brought it out a couple years ago. Um, and it's a great printer, but we were using Cambridge, and at that point, uh, Three Shape had already stopped supporting Cambridge as their canning oh, software. Yeah, that's a little so glitch. So huh? it kind of put things on the back burner. Uh, we redesigned and created our own 
cam software now that is very automated, makes it very quick and easy to do. Best um, of the best. So yeah, of so it's it's nice to have that back out. Sweet. And uh, with that, I'm looking forward to maybe doing some uh, print and press type courses. Oh, I'd um, like to go to that. Oh yeah, I think it's going to be great because. Uh, press technology is one of those things that everybody thinks, oh, ivyclar has gone all digital. They want you to do nothing but milling Emacs. There are There's still so many things pressing. to do with pressing. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, Big time. I don't press everything. Um, if I am going to do a small, lower anterior, I don't mill any of those because it can be problematic just because of those the hole inside where, where the prep goes can be so small. Can't get yeah, in there you can't get in there birds. without breaking it. I know. And that's where yep. pressing comes in handy yeah. for that. So it's still a great technology to have out there. And especially for the smaller guys where maybe they can't yeah. afford Agreed. a big mill yeah. or they got that mill tied up with zirconia. I still print press. That stuff. Yeah. So if I have a veneer or something, a veneer case a or a implant, yep. we still press a print lot of and press that. that. Absolutely. And, you know, it works extremely well. Yeah. Um, I've got a question though about sure. the Ivotion because I don't yeah, know yeah. a lot. What makes it so special? Why is it amazing taking off? I mean, BJ was yeah. talking about it yesterday. The Denture Man was just talking to <laughs> yeah, us about it. Yeah, everybody likes it. Yeah. It sounds like it's just the best material. I love I love Ivotion. I love Ivotion because it fully automates. I, I put a disc in and I get a full denture out. I don't have to go put it in, take it out, bond teeth into it, put it back in, or do any cleanup or anything like that uh, of bonding material between the tooth and the base. Wow. I get to put one in and, and take it out and people say how does that work you got a pink and a white tooth or disc together and you know there were some before ivotion came out and i've seen some after it that were just a plain disc that were a straight line between the pink and the white yeah which that is not the case with ivotion ivotion has got a special geometry that we developed that by looking at thousands of already proven dentures that were out there that people were wearing and how they fit and we kind of looked at how that tooth spacing was and they developed this we call it a shell geometry kind of looks like a scallop shell so it's got little ridges and little grooves in it mm -hmm. and we figured out that the posterior teeth can be in one spot in those grooves anterior teeth in another spot and it uh, and it works very well for differentiating is it going to be for every denture no but it's going to be for the majority of them wow. out there and uh, and we're I've, I've seeing new innovations that we're working on right now in, in development uh, that are going to make it e even neater. I can't really talk about them, but they are there. Well, and, you're and, and, yeah, I'm exactly. sure the, you guys are going to come oh, up we're with always something and better and better and better. What can so, you not talk about again? <laughs> <laughs> well, no. So <laughs> is it the PM7 that uses and that mills those discs? Any of our program mills can actually do it. Any of our program mills, so you could get with the program mill dry, you get the three, the five, or the seven. Any of them will do it. I will tell people that if they're going to do it, I only recommend the PM7, especially if they're going to be doing the majority of milling PMMA. Yeah. Because A couple it's so reasons. hard. It's hard to mill, so that larger spindle, more powerful spindle in yeah, the PM7 yeah. is better. Yeah. The PM7 also has a larger spindle, so the PM dry, the PM three, the PM5, they all have the spindle size will only take up to a three millimeter tool. It's got a three oh. millimeter collet in it. Yeah, denture use big birds. That PM7 has a six millimeter collet in it, and oh, that wow. will allow us to use a five millimeter roughing mill yeah. burr in there, yeah, and yeah. it will hog through that PMMA hog like hot butter. I was just going to say, it's going, man. Yeah, it does, and it's loud. When that first, that, that works, but within five minutes, ten minutes, it has done the majority of that milling, and uh, it will cut 45 minutes off the mill time between the, the PM7 and the PM3. Wow. So... Ivotion, but you got a printer. Are you going to be printing dentures on this thing, or are you guys sticking with Ivotion? Well, I That's wish I could talk what's about coming. it. I wish I could talk about it, but I can't. <laughs> Snap. So, yeah. So the answer is not no. The answer is not no. Of course, we're working on something. We're, you know, that we're Always. Ivoclar. We're going. Yep. We know that subtractive technology is great, but it's not the end all of this sure. of digital. Uh, additive technology, you know, in the long run is cheaper. Uh, the material's cheaper, and, uh, uh, you know, you have just as much time working with it because you still have that extensive cleaning process after it's yeah. printed. Oh, yeah. But, Post but it is definitely, additive is definitely the future of where digital is going. Um, you know, I've seen, 
you know, we've got already get, we are working with um, a company uh, that is doing a, a printer that is printing our lithium disilicate material. Ooh, um, that's yeah, pretty sweet. Yeah, it's interesting. Sweet. You've seen, you've seen the printers that, that are doing uh, zirconia, the new metal printers that are out there. Yeah. We all know that that's where things are going and headed towards. So um, are they all there yet? No, no, no but they will be. Yeah. But they will be. Yeah, that's exciting. that's 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 uh, that's an exciting one. When I heard saw yeah. that last year, I was uh, I was really interested. But it's uh, a company called Lithos, and they're out of Europe. So, but yeah, they 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 do, out of Europe. they do the printer. <laughs> they've got the big printer and everything, and then we just supply the the material for it to, to go into it. And so, then, yeah, that's yeah. cool. That's exciting. It's a really neat little process. So well, awesome. Well, yeah, thanks, but, Pat. Oh, thank you. My pleasure. My giving pleasure. Giving us all that information. Oh, hey. I love it. I do what I can. So, yeah. Um, Good luck to you in your new role. Thank you. I appreciate I it. I'm really looking forward to it. will check out the courses. Yeah, yeah. I really like to get up there. And Absolutely. Anybody, courses. anybody that's interested in them can always go to our website and go to the top of the website where it says Learn and find uh, our academy. And we have in-person training. It has all of our trainings throughout the year for both iVotion and Crown and Bridge. And Gary Osborne does a lot of stain and glaze courses for, for doctors, for in-house. Um, Jeff Smith does a lot of layering courses still. Yeah. So those are all still out there and uh, really love to get people if into If a it. lab wanted you to come out, would you go out or do yeah. you send the oh, other absolutely. one? Yeah, okay. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, that's that's. Of the well, new you're going to be really busy. Yes. We have a lot of listeners. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so, yeah, so reach out to me, uh, patrick.coon at ivaclar.com. Love uh, it. I love, love to it. hear from y'all. Yeah, so. absolutely. Thank but you. Thanks for yeah. sitting down, sir. Oh, yeah. not a problem. Absolutely. Thanks, Elvis. Great I appreciate it. Great it. Barb, thank thanks. you. Hi, good morning. Okay, so um, we're working. <laughs> I'll see you in a few. It looks like. Peggy Alexander was just brought in by Barb. <laughs> Have a seat. Okay. Peggy, so, how are you? I'm fine. I'm enjoying this. I've been here since Wednesday. Wow. Oh, really? Yes. I'm a member of the American Prosthodontic Society. Oh, okay. And a good friend of Paco and um, Cortez and Marinella. Oh, wow. Am. Big names. So we all teach together at the University of Texas Health Science Center at San Antonio. So you're a teacher? Yes. I'm a clinical professor. Wow. She's a clinical professor. She's 87 years old. Young. And a doctor. 87 years young. <laughs> and an educator, which we all know how much we love the education and the educators. So tell us a little bit about your story. Well, I, when I was growing up, my uncle was a dentist. And the family friend was a dentist. And, you know, this is Alabama back in the 50s. Oh. And so I, you know, you if you were a female, you were supposed to get an education so you'd have something to fall back on. <laughs> Your fallback was Basically, dentist? Basically, <laughs> stay home and raise the kids. Well, yeah. <laughs> but, no, so they decided they had opened a dental hygiene school at the University of Alabama. Okay. So I applied there and was in, I think, the second or third class, you know, that they had. And Alabama at that time didn't require formal education for a dental hygienist. You could, Anybody could they, do it? They could, you know, you'd be taught in the, in the dental oh, office. Oh, okay, yeah. Supposedly. No gloves. <laughs> oh, no gloves, no. So anyway, the, the thing was that I went through all that, had marvelous teachers. One of the, the people who taught my uh, dental anatomy was, oh shoot, what was his name now? There's some kind of an award here, I can't remember what it is. Uh, Sherry, Jack Sherry. Oh, I know that name. Yes, yeah, he was a prosthodontist and uh, he became the dean of the dental school at San Antonio, ultimately. Oh, so. okay. Uh, but anyway, the whole thing about it was that I went through that, and then I said to myself, you know, I'm, I want to go to dental school, but I have to get a degree. And my, I told my father, okay, I want to get a, a degree so I can apply to the dental school here in, in, in Alabama. And he said, uh, no, you've I mean, you had plenty of money. That was not a deal. He yeah. says, you've got something to fall back on now, so... You don't need no, it. You don't need it. You wow. <laughs> How'd you handle so, that? <laughs> okay, I discovered if I took the board in uh, Florida, I could make about twice what I could make 
in Alabama. Sure. So I decided to move to Florida. I moved to Sarasota and had a marvelous practice, was in a wonderful practice. I mean, our patients were McKinley Cantor. I don't know if you ever heard him. He wrote a lot of books oh, and yeah. what have you. So you, you know. have the patients. So I had <laughs> the patients. I mean, nice. it was a wonderful experience. But I saved all the money I could, came back to the University of Alabama, got my degree in, in biology, applied, and they said, Honey, Did your dad know you were doing all this? Oh, oh yeah. Okay. yeah. I mean, yeah. You know, he, he finally got to where he said, okay, you know. All right, my so, daughter's going up. Yeah, and began to, you know, yep. support me. Then. But anyway, but I went over to apply, and the guy said, Honey, what is wrong with you? Don't you know nobody would go to women? They're not strong enough. What? <laughs> See, this is back in 1958, yeah, yeah. Wow. and you know so that probably made you want to do it more, right? No, I mean I, I knew you can't get horsey, you know, because that's not going to help. Yeah. So he said, "Why don't you get married and have children like the rest of your friends?" Oh, <laughs> so I got married and had children. Okay. But I continued. I married a man who was an executive with a company and. You know, all the other wives would sit around and play bridge every day, but I continued to practice hygiene. And so at one point, I just said, okay, when I was 34, uh, the youngest child had gone, you know, he was accepted into college, and then I thought, well, okay, and the next one's going to be ready to go. So I applied. At, I was living in North Carolina at that time. Mm. I applied there, and they said, we can fill the class with 22-year-olds. You're 34. You're too old. Now you're too old. <laughs> wow. Jeez. I can't believe they actually said these things to you. It's like yeah, they like, actually did. You know, And they and thought that was okay. They, and it was okay at that time. It's not now. You yeah, know. but your money but. is money. I mean, <laughs> you're still going <laughs> to... It's not like you could, you're not going to give them money to go to school. I mean, yeah. What do they care? yeah. So, well, so how'd you handle it? Okay. One of the people who interviewed me was a, an African-American guy. And he said, I can already tell you you're not getting in here, but if you will go to Howard or Meharry, I will see that you're accepted there. So I went to Meharry. I was one of five white students in a class of 55. A marvelous experience. Yeah. And, you know, some of them. I still am in communication with a lot of my friends there. That's awesome. And, uh, in fact, my best friend was uh, LaTanya Bailey, who went to Carolina after Meharry and did the ortho program and became the head of the, the orthodontic graduate division. Oh, wow. There. <laughs> you so, know a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, it, it's been a wonderful experience. And then I joined the public uh, husband divorced me for some reason you got Stupid too smart man. oh well i don't know what it was but it, it was <laughs> <laughs> anyway so i said y'all can go to hell i'm gonna go to texas <laughs> <laughs> that is the quote of the day <laughs> that is sweet <laughs> so and anyway they uh, joined the public health service and i was uh, assigned to a clinic where most everybody spoke only spanish and I didn't speak a syllable. Yeah. Of a lot of barriers. <laughs> Jeez. But that's the best way to learn a language. I guess Throw so. Throw yourself in there. Yeah, and because I had studied French, and so you're kind of familiar with the sentence construction. Yeah, but yeah. still, it's a different language. And uh, so I immersed then you myself were practicing in it. dentist. So well, I, I was in that for several years, and then I uh, I remarried. A uh, a, a rancher, a rancher. So <laughs> I went from being a tree hugger to, <laughs> to I didn't shoot anything. You know. Yeah. <laughs> but we ate everything we shot. There you, you know. go. You nothing wrong with that. <laughs> anyway, so that was a, a nice life. And my youngest son has now become a pediatric dentist. Oh, wow. So, and he's practicing over in North Carolina. So, you know, we, we're kind of keeping it all going. But it's been... It's been a, a challenge in a way, but in another way, it's been a delight. For you know, sure. every everything has been great. I had a little practice for a little while, and that's when I became so aware of how important it is to work with your laboratory people. I mean, you've 
it, yeah. you're you're a team, and if they Amen. see something that you need to know, they need to tell you, and, and you need versa. to listen. You know, you, you the the whole thing is yeah. that, that we're in this together, and and it's hard to to get a product that is going to last. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so anyway. I was given an opportunity to start teaching at the dental school, and that was in Texas. In te yeah, San Antonio. Okay. So that was 30 years ago. What did you teach? I am I, I'm in the Department of Comprehensive Dentistry, but I also did have done a good bit of uh, research with Tom Oates, who is a periodontist, mm. and we're doing a lot of uh, dental implants. And I would do the prosthodontic treatment. So I'm kind of, I mean, my leaning is toward a pros being wow. a prosthodontist. Wow. So I teach in the pros course. and Still? Still, yeah. That's amazing. And so anyway, it's been a great life. What the heck are you doing here at Lab Day? I was just going to ask <laughs> you. Well, you said you were at many places. So take us through your week. You got here Wednesday. And got, I'm got sure here Wednesday. And I would, I'm good friends with, with Paco Cortez, who is, was the president last year of the American Prosthodontic Society. Oh, okay. Wow. And his wife, Marinella Virial, is, uh, I teach with her in the clinic. I'm, I work in the clinic itself one day a week, but the rest of the time I run the screening clinic. So when anybody wants to come to the dental school to be a patient, yeah. then they have to go through a screening process so that we know where they need to go. Oh, I see. You yeah. know, if they walk in off the street. I mean, so you like treatment planning kind of thing? Or? Well, uh, we don't treatment plan. We we decide, we do a quick what assessment about, you know, this person just needs to have their teeth cleaned. You know, yeah, Okay, yeah. And so we send them to dental hygiene. And somebody else, you know, look, it looks like they have a few operative uh, things that need to be done, so they will be put in the preclinical, so I mean, the pre-doctoral course. Do, right? you do x-rays, or do you actually get panoramic, in the mouth? Panoramic. Nice. Yeah. And then we we uh, we look in the mouth, too, yeah. to confirm. So it's really a very good yeah. way to get everybody. And then some people, we identify immediately that they need to be in the specialty clinic. Yeah. So we'll send them to advanced general dentistry or to, you know, if they've got... Uh, some immediate need, we'll send them to grad endo or yeah, you know, sure. something like that. That's cool. So it's kind of figuring it out, you know, on yeah. the spot. And uh, that's really exciting. Okay, so you got so here Wednesday. Frost, you hang yep. out with friends. Yep. Have, oh, and they, have, they had two whole days of lectures. Yeah. For the prosthodontist? For the pros, yeah. yeah. And, you know, a lot of it was showing all of this new technology and how... You need to understand what to do and what not to do. Mm. I love that. Because, I mean, yeah. a, a zirconium, I'm telling you, people, the, the, the dentists who do not know how to manage it are creating problems, you know. Yeah. Yeah. What does that mean? Help me they, understand okay, that. Okay, the structure of zirconium, if you don't polish it correctly. We talked about that yesterday. Then you create these micro fractures, and then all of a sudden the patient shows up at my Crack. clinic, yep. and they're from outside, you know, somebody else outside didn't pay attention to what they were doing or maybe didn't understand what they were doing. And they come in, and they've had a three-unit FPD done, and half of it's broken off right at the pontic, you know. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, they're mad and they're unhappy because they spent all that money and this thing is broken. And so that's why I want to get us to where we are letting dentists who have not acquainted themselves with the techniques to understand, you know, there are certain things you can and cannot do. Yeah. And it's, a, it's one thing to teach a bunch of prosthodontists that. How do you tell the generals? That's right. That same but thing. You it, know, they're uh -huh. not going to those courses, uh -huh. but they need to know it. They're the ones placing all these Absolutely. zirconia units. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm surprised they don't know that. I mean, it's such a no-brainer. I'm sure some do. For Let's us it is, it but <laughs> it's kind of scary, though, because they are doing a lot of that grinding. And just Without, to think about yeah. how many are going to fail eventually mm -hmm. down the road mm -hmm. because they don't know that, mm -hmm. that's kind of scary. 
Well, that's, that's why we just have to keep plugging away and, you know, making sure that we're educating, educating them and have the have the dentists communicate with the lab people. I mean, they're everybody's in it together. Yeah, a hundred percent. If the lab sees something, if the dentist sees something, you know, communicate for Pete's sake. Yeah. You know, we're we're not at a different level. We're all in the same So why are you boat. not teaching a course here at Lab Day and letting us know all this good stuff? <laughs> we need this Next information year. too. Next year. You should set up a course. Talk about this kind of stuff. She's in like, my spare I think time. I'm busy enough, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, so, what are you doing actually here? So well, do you I've, just go to all the vendors, or you go and what? I, I just today. wanted to come over today it's and pretty just, neat. you know see what's going on and, and look to have see. You, have you been to the exhibit hall yet? Downstairs? No, is there another floor below? Oh, oh yeah. that's <laughs> the big room. Oh, with thousands it's of crazy. Rooms. Whoa. Okay. Well, no. I mean, I saw your name, and I. You know, I have a Clara, you know, that's yep, that's a yep. name I know. So I'm going to retire this year. Oh. How do you and make up your mind that it's time to retire at, <laughs> at 87? And I'm giving you a compliment. Like, how do you finally know? Or, or, or Because I, the family house came up for sale and I was able to buy it. Okay. And it is on the Tennessee River. Mm. The, the river is a mile wide right in front of my house. Wow. You're like so, on the water. On the water. That's right nice. Now. You're like Peggy <laughs> out. <laughs> but I'm going to open cool. a denture mill. <laughs> Are you really? I, I love doing dentures. That is so I cool. I love doing dentures. Yeah. So you're going to continue doing dentures. Uh-huh, right. So you're not retiring. You're just no, kind of retiring. No, you're just no, shifting. No, no, no. I, 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 with your energy, I just that doesn't make sense to me how you could. Well, I'm scared of retiring because I see so many of my friends. Yeah, you know, they're, they're they just get meek and uh, don't small. have. Yeah, they well, don't if have you're any making dentures, purpose. you'll stay busy. <laughs> Especially in Alabama. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did I, I didn't say that. Did yeah. <laughs> That's, That's hilarious. That's great. So, where are you going to open a denture mill? How, on your property? No, in town. Oh, you know, that's great. Just, uh, there's a town called Russellville that's close to Muscle Shells. Is, you ever heard of Muscle Shells? No. <laughs> All right. There's a song called Sweet Home Alabama. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. One of the lines in it is Muscle Shells has got the Swampers. And that is a musical group. And do you ever look at YouTube? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. There is a documentary about Muscle Shells. And it is absolutely worth watching because okay. it is, it's amazing. Learning something new there today. Go, okay, yeah. the river's full of mussels, M-U-S-S-E-L. Yeah. But they didn't, this is Alabama, they didn't know how to spell it. It's M-U-S-C-L. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, oh, so that's great. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. No, you can't, actually. <laughs> and never lose your sense of humor. That's pretty yeah. awesome. <laughs> Well, anyway, it was, oh, oh, Mr. Russellville, the city is half Spanish-speaking people only. Yeah. They have a well, chicken. Well, you're used to that because that's uh, where yeah, you started. Truly, yeah. and that's why this, this dentist who's there, he said, you know, I'd really like to open a little clinic there. And that would be great because I can habla de dientes muy yeah. bien. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And you can stay busy and just make teeth all uh-huh. day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, anyway, so now you know that's my story. I love it. Peggy, that's great. Okay, the the rancher died of cancer, unfortunately. Yeah. So I was not married for a little while. And then I remarried a guy who was a World War II B-24 bomber pilot. Wow. He won the Silver Star when he was 24 years old wow. because of... Being you know, a, incredible I mean, stuff that he yeah. did. And he said after that, you know, every day was a gift. But so true. he was a uh, an amazing person to be married to and from Charlotte, you know, so we had all the North Carolina connections and nice. everything. And uh, he died about three years ago at 97. Oh, well, that's awesome. Wow. So, s- still buying stocks for growth potential, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Well, good for you. That's a pretty amazing story. Thank you for sitting well, with us. Well, all right. So what, what do y'all do with this? Just kind of. <laughs> <laughs> so we're the uh, a podcast for our dental industry. Oh. Elvis and I have been doing it for about six years, and we talk to amazing people every single week, and then we release it. We talk to people tune in. anybody and everybody that would love to sit down and tell us their story and how they got into the industry and it's a passion of ours, and we, we love, love it. it. So thank well, you. you be sure to say to tell anybody that a lot of my friends are very have the same mentality that I do toward how we have to communicate with our our lab people. That's awesome yeah. because it's a it's a combined effort. For we sure. don't have and to we tell say them. the you same thing. Them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the loyalty and the communication and the working together. We're all on the same level. So I feel like we're really making a difference. And it's one of the big great. things we promote on the podcast. You yeah, know? Just for sure. Doing it right, communicating well, mm-hmm. yep. work with the best. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Well, thank right. you, Maggie. You're certainly welcome. And Thanks. I'm going to go over and talk to the Zirconia Restorations people. There you Fantastic. go. See what they got to say. Excellent. All right. Thanks. A huge thanks, you guys, James, James, Patrick, and Peggy, for sitting down with Elvis and I in the Iva Clark Ballroom at the LMT Lab Day Chicago 2024. It is always great to catch up with old guests, and we love it even more when they bring their kids into our crazy, wonderful profession. I really love that James is helping his son to be a better clinician by showing him the proper way to restore full arch patients on the day of surgery. Good luck on all your future solo conversions. And of course, we are thankful to Patrick for his continued excellent education that he's given to everybody over the years. One of the many things that sets Ivaclar apart is their dedication to making sure everyone has the ability to get education on their products. It's a no-brainer. They're amazing. Yep. It's not just a sale for them. They want you to succeed and they want you to get better. Anybody out there thinks they would be good at taking Pat's old position at Ivaclar and has some passion for education, reach out to Pat. Reach out to Ivaclar. I don't know if that's our role, but why not, right? <laughs> Sounds like an amazing opportunity for the right person. Who didn't love the story of Peggy, you guys, and all the BS that she had to get through to where she is today? What an amazing woman, and we love that even though she's retiring, I don't think she's retiring. I think she's <laughs> just retiring some sort of something, and then she's going to go on to bigger and better things. And she wants to make dentures next, obviously, not because she has to, but because she wants to, because she loves making teeth, which I totally get, because I love making teeth. I could see both of us still doing something tooth-related. <laughs> oh, yeah. Into our 90s. I do, too. <laughs> All right, everybody, that's all we got for you, and we will talk to you next week. Have a great week. Bye. God, I can't believe it's already March, April. Can't believe it's it's April. (laughs) Jesus. I'm not going to shut up. The views and opinions expressed on the Voices from the Bench podcast are those of the guest and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of the host or Voices from the Bench, LLC.